بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد continue reading from the treaties ثلاثه اصول وادلتها by the great Imam Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala reading from the first introduction that the author he has mentioned the al-masail al-arba' al-masail al-arba' the four affairs the four important issues which are obligatory upon every Muslim to learn them and to know them and to abide by them the first one is knowledge and then after that knowledge is two apply it and then to call to it and to teach that knowledge and to be patient upon the harm in that way and to be patient upon the harm in that way in our previous class we were discussing the, discussing the issue of a sabr and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned a sabr diya a sabr diya that patience it is diya and diya the ulama they mentioned is a type of light that has heat like radiance it's along with light, also it has heat. And this is the case of being patient. It requires for a person to bear some difficulty and hardship. But as sabr maqamun adhimun min maqamat al-deen, as-sabr fi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being patient for the sake of Allah, seeking the reward from Allah, being patient. Uh, patience is a, is a great level and status and rank in the religion of Allah azza wa jal. High status. وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا لِلِينَ الصَّبْرُ وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبْرُ جَنَّةٍ وَحَرِيرًا And the reward for patience is paradise. And the reward for those who are patient, is they'll be given their reward without any, uh, without any uh, end, with no end. A great, great reward for the patient people. The ulama, they mentioned the sabru thalatha tu anwa'a. The sabru thalatha tu anwa'a. This is where we left off in our previous class. The patience, it is three types. Who can remind us of them? Sabr. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The, the, the word sabr, yasbiru. Isbir. Wasbir nafsaka ma'a ladina. Yad'una rabbahum bilghadati wal ashi. Sabr wal habs. Habs. That's what it means to refrain and to, to control something. To refrain it and to confine it. Habsun nafs, Habsun nafs to a person to to refrain and to control his soul, and to, to prohibit his soul from doing anything that is displeasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with the tongue or with the hands, and to be patient. But and the reality is a sabr, uh, to anwa. So insan yasbiru ala shay, wa yasbiru an shay, and yahbisu nafsuhu ala shayin, wa yahbisu nafsahu an shayin. And they have two different meanings. Sabr ala wa sabr an. That's the beauty of the Arabic language in learning that. Huruf al-jar. Huruf al-jar with, with one word can change the meaning. So the ulama they mention as sabru ala ta'atillah. Ala ta'atillah. As sabru, the first, the first level of or, or the type of patience. As sabru ala ta'atillah. Ay ala adai awamiri lahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wamtithari awamirihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-wajiba wa mustahabba. Al-wajiba wa mustahabba. To perform the, the, the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. The obligatory commandments and the, per- and the preferred commandments. This requires patience. This is the first type of patience. A believer, he has to have patience in all three categories. This is very beneficial to understand. As-sabru uh, ala ta'atillah. Being patient upon the obedience of Allah. And he's the commandments, performing his commandments, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether they're obligatory, first and foremost, of course. And likewise, even the commandments that are not obligatory, but they're preferred. A person, in order to establish them and to perform them, requires for him to be, to be patient. Who can give us an example of being patient upon the obedience of Allah? Huh? On the obedience of Allah. Waiting in the long line. You have to be patient in the long line. Sah. This, this is from the good manners. The, it's obligatory to have good manners. Sah. Alhamdulillah. Huh. Now. 
Now patience upon the obedience of Allah. That's why we want to, we want to, and the word, what do I say? Fahmu, as-su'ali nisfu, al-jawab. Understanding the question is half of the answer. To be patient upon obedience. Example, we want some examples. How a believer will be patient upon the obedience of Allah. Uh-huh. Be patient in praying on time. Ayyuh, being patient with the salat. To perform the salat on time. At the proper time, uh, in the proper manner. And in the best places, uh, requires patience. Requires patience. One has to refrain himself and check his soul in order to perform it at the right time. Naam, and this requires patience. So, another example. To make wudu. To make wudu. This requires patience. Day in and day out. Making wudu in the morning time. In the, in the winter time when it's cold. For example. Or one who, some people maybe they work outside. The Dhuhr comes. They work outside in the cold. Construction workers and the likes like this. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, it's, requ- it's a requirement to make wudu. So he has to be patient upon that. And make the wudu. Whether it's cold or not. He makes the wudu. Naam, and then he prays. So it, it requires patience to perform these obligations day in and day out. Naam. Another example. Hmm. Fasting. Fasting requires patience. No doubt about that. Requires patience. Rather, fasting is, a, is the school and the training for patience on how to be patient. But all of the actions that are obligatory to perform and all of the actions that are preferred and recommended to perform, uh, a believer it requires patience for him to comply to those commandments. And to perform them and to consistently be upon them. This requires patience. This requires for a person to have patience. The second, everybody's with me, huh? As sabru ala ala ta'atillah. As sabru ala ta'atillah. What is ta'atillah here? What does it mean? Huh? It was specifically meaning al awamir. Fil al ma'murat. Al ma'murat. To perform the obligations. To perform the commandments. Yani the commandments that are obligatory. Al-wajiba minha wa al-mustahabba. All of this is included. Patience. You have to. One has to have patience for this. One has to have patience for this. طيب النوع الثاني. An. أحسن. Now they say an. الصبر عن محارم الله عن معاصي الله. يعني الصبر عن المعصية. To be patient in leaving off. And leaving off disobedience, to to leave off disobedience, to stay away from the haram, to stay away from that which is impermissible, to stay away from the al manhiyat, a a istinab al manhiyat, nam al muharrama minha wal makruha, al muharrama minha wal makruha, to leave off the manhiyat, the manhiyat, the manhiyat are the prohibitions. The prohibitions are two types. One type is that impermissible, impermissible prohibitions. Other types of prohibitions they are. Disliked. They're disliked prohibitions. So to perform both of them, which one comes first and is most important? Al Muharrama. Al Muharrama, the impermissible ones. First, he has to be patient. This requires patience to leave them. There are there are Muharramat wa man omanhiyat Muharrama Tataalaku bil Ain. Wamanha tataalaku bil yad. Wamanha tataalaku bi al lisan wal qalb. There's uh, prohibitions that are impermissible. They are related to the eyes. Related to the hands, related to the tongue, related to the heart. Nam, it's impermissible to have hasid. That's in the heart. It's impermissible to have hiq in baghda for the believers, for the believers, and for the righteous in the heart of a person. It's not permissible. These are prohibitions. Prohibitions that are related to the heart. It's prohibited to rely upon the creation, the type of reliance that is worship, a tawakkul, and this is a prohibition. So. In order for a person to fulfill these uh, and to, to stay away, fulfill these rights and to stay away from these prohibitions, it requires patience. There's prohibitions with regards to wealth and how one earns it and how one spends it. And prohibitions with regards to food, prohibitions with regards to sitting, prohibitions with regards to eating, prohibitions with regards to clothing, prohibitions with regards to haircut. For prohibitions with regards to many things that require, in order to, per, to perform these and stay away from them properly, it requires sabr. Sabr an ma'asiyatillah. Sabr an ma'asiyah. So the first one, sabr ala ta'atillah. And the second one, sabr an ma'asiyatillah. To be patient in leaving off the, the, the disobedience, the actions of disobedience. This requires patience. It requires patience. It requires for a person to remember Allah Azza wa Jal and to refrain himself 
and to control his tongue and to check his eyes and to have patience with his hands and the likes and to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this aids in that patience and uh, this is the uh, a beautiful point here the ulama mentioned that as-sabru hiya ibadah wa tukunu wa yukunu lillah wa hadhi ibadah tukunu lillah the patience it has to be for the sake of Allah some people for example the brother he mentioned being patient in a line some people he doesn't have no choice he's just patient waiting in line and that's, that's, that's normal. He's just patient waiting in line because he doesn't have any choice. But to be patient, the one that is in ibadah, he does it for the sake of Allah. And this is a high status and a high rank uh, for a believer to reach and to achieve. And من مقامات إياك نعبود وإياك نستعين To be patient. Seeking the reward from Allah. Somebody may say something, act foolishly. He'll respond with patience. He'll, he'll, he will respond with patience. He will, he will control his thumb. He won't backlash back out. Somebody will curse him, he doesn't curse back. Why? He's being patient. He's remembering the reward. He's remembering the recompense and the dangers of the tongue. So he will refrain from speaking in the manner that's displeasing to Allah. So he's patient. He's going, it's hard though. He, he said something, you said that. He wants to say something back, but he remembers Allah. And he refrains patiently upon the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jalla, hoping for the reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is a great status. He has a great opportunity to make some money. Come to find out there's a contract that's invalid or, or impermissible there. He's tested. All he has to do is just sign right here and he's good. Big money. But he found out that there's some, there's some things there involved in this transaction that are impermissible. He has to be patient. To avoid that and to leave it. This requires patience. This requires patience. But the one who does this patience for the sake of Allah, he's reached a great status. Remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla and remembering His commandments and patiently leaving that off hoping for the reward. This is the ibadah. This is ibadah azima jiddin in the life of a believer. Going through the street, somebody cuts him off. Or somebody cuts him off and then blames him, which happens many times. They'll cut somebody off and then they'll honk and yell and cuss like this. Huh? How would one respond? Ignorantly? La. He responds with patience. He responds with patience, keeping his honor, keeping his modesty. And chastity in his tongue and his speech, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of this doing it, not because he's forced to, rather he has a choice. He refrained himself. Yahbisu nafsahu, huh? Hoping for the reward of Allah. This is the patience that a person reaches, he reaches the high status. That the people of patience, they will be given their reward without any reckoning. And meaning that it will be a tremendous reward. It will be a tremendous reward. So this requires patience, but the patience, the one that has the remembrance of Allah and the one who is patient, hoping for the reward of Allah. It's cold outside, he doesn't want to make wudu. He makes the wudu properly and good because he remembers Allah and he is patient upon that with the remembrance of Allah, hoping for the reward. He could take the money, but he doesn't do it. Not afraid of the blame of the people, afraid of the punishment of Allah. Afraid of the punishment of Allah. Afraid of the anger of this is the patience that is beneficial. This is the patience that not everybody can reach. Some people can be patient in a line because they have no choice. The line at Walmart is long, you just sit there patiently. But the one who can do that and change that to an act of worship by thinking about Allah Azza wa Jalla, remembering Him and controlling His self and His conduct and His manners, hoping for the reward. Hoping for the reward. So whatever the case may be, whether it's an obligation, a person, he will remain patiently upon that obligation. Hoping for the reward from Allah Azza wa uh, The prohibition likewise, to leave it off. This is a great, great, great reward for those who leave off those prohibitions hoping for the reward of Allah. The one who is able to control his self, his own soul, hoping for the reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is patience. This is patience. And he's hoping for the reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and controlling oneself. Controlling one's tongue. Controlling one's eyes. He sees something, he wants to look and look and look, but he refrains. He refrains and he remembers Allah Azza wa Jal and he fears him. And he fears him. That person who talked bad about him, he wants to talk bad back, he doesn't, he refrains. He remembers Allah, he's patient. And he, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful status and rank in the deen. A, a level of being patient for the sake of Allah. Being patient for the sake of Allah. As-sabr. This is obligation. Yajibu alayna. Yajibu alayna. This is obligation. As-sabr. al adha any but sabr also you have to be patient upon obedience. You have to be patient upon or, or, or from from leaving off the, 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 the disobedience. And you also the third one? Uh-huh. Uh 
patience upon calamities, the decrees of Allah that are painful and hard, uh, that are difficult, hardships and difficult calamities in, in the wealth or in the family or calamities in, in uh, the body from sickness and the life like this, the loss of life or loved one or sickness or uh, trials in wealth and poverty and the life like this. All of this are from the the decrees of Allah Azza wa This is from Allah's decree. So the third one, the ulama they mentioned, as-sabru, as-sabru alam aqdari Allah al-mu'lima. Aqdari Allah al-mu'lima. The painful decrees of Allah Azza wa Jalla. The hard uh, calamities. One has to be patient with these things. That he would not say anything that would displease, uh, 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 that would cause the anger of Allah or displease him. That would cause the anger of Allah or displease him. For example, like one. A calamity befalls some people and, and if they're not patient, uh, they may say something or do something that is displeasing to Allah. Azza wa Jalla. For example. Huh? Death of a loved one. The death of a loved one. This is the example of the, of the calamity. Naam. But now we need an example of how uh, somebody could, uh, if somebody is not patient, maybe what maybe they, they might do. Shaq al-juyub wa darb al-khuyud al-khuyud and he's slapping the face ripping the clothing wa da'wa bi da'wa jahiliyyah this came in the hadith of the Prophet specifically that whenever there's a calamity they would rip their the juyub the juyub this is the jayib that's not what is intended in the hadith this part of the thob they'll rip it like this rip their clothing like this and tear their clothing because of uh, their, the pain and the remorse and, the, and, the, and, and they're being displeased with the calamity, not being able to bear it. Or they would slap their faces like this, becoming angry and losing control of oneself. And he, so, for example, many people, whenever they become angry, they punch the wall. Or they slam the table or they throw chairs. All of this is because of the calamity, something bad happened, they throw his chair. He lost his job. He he drive crazy through the street, honking at everybody, wrecking his car because he lost his job. Or something happened with the family, so he throws a chair across the room, like this. This is all being showing this the, the, the detestfulness for the decrees and the calamities, uh, and the difficult uh, decrees that uh, Allah decrees for the servant to to occur to him. Sometimes these decrees they occur. They're a test for the person. They're a test for the person, and to see whether he will deal with them properly. So these are some of the examples of uh, a person uh, not being patient with the calamities and the, and the difficult and the hard, the hardship from calamities that are decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other times some people may say, for example, why me? Why me? Uh, he will say, he doesn't deserve this. He say, he doesn't deserve this. He will, and so what they'll say, subhanAllah, so, so and so he prays every day in the masjid, oh, da, 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 this, he doesn't deserve that. How could that happen to him? He doesn't deserve that. Hawdhu billah. Hawdhu billah. The one would never say this about the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. About the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal will cause the calamity to befall somebody, on somebody and He will raise their rank by way of that. He will raise their rank by way of that. Purifying their sins and, and raise their rank. And, and the likes like this. And other people, maybe they're given wealth and they will be lowered by that. They'll be lowered by that. And he will gain him wealth and it will cause him to become more disobedient. He will gain a man that, that will cause him to transgress the limits. So that's not the, 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 the criteria in between here. But in any case, whenever somebody is inflicted with a hardship or difficulty, what's obligatory is to be patient. Now, with Abturiya, Sabara. With Abturiya, Sabara. That he will be patient in the time of calamities. All of this is from... Uh, the obligations of a believer. Naam? So this is what we benefit from the statement of the author here, was sabru al adha fi, that we have to have patience. Who can remember all three of them? Sabru ala ta'atillah. And ma'asiyatillah. Sabru al ma'asiyatillah. Ala akhdarillah. Sabru ala akhdarillah al-mu'lima. Naam. So who can say them in English? Uh huh. Patience. patience. Upon. Every man. Obedience. The obedience of Allah. Uh, the patience upon the obedience of Allah. Then, patience. And leaving off the disobedience. And leaving off the disobedience of Allah. And then patience. 
upon the calamities, the decrees, the, the difficult decrees. Some decrees any in, in, that are decreed for the, that will befall a person from hardships and calamities. Not from hardships and calamities. This all requires requires patience. So the author he is reminding us here, Ilam Rahima Kala and Huyaji Bualina ta alumu, Arba Ima Sail, Al Ura Ilmu, Al Ilmu, who a Marifu to Lahi, wa Marifu to Nabihi, wa Marifu to Din and Islami Bil Adilla, with Thania, Al Amuru Bihi, with Tharitha, a Dawa to Ilahi, with Rabia, a Sabru Al Ada Fihi. Who memorized that? Anybody memorize that? Where's the youth? Huh? Nah? Had. Uh huh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya Allah ar-Rahim al-Allah. Anhu yajibu alayna. Taalumu. Arba'i masail. Al-Ula. Ma'rifu tu Allahi. Wa ma'rifu tu Nabihi. Wa ma'rifu tu Dina al-Islami bil-Adil. Al-Thaniya. Al-Amalu bihi. Al-Tharitha. الدعوة إليه الرابعة الصبر على الأذى فيه أحسنتم أحسنتم I believe he memorized this text he memorized this text he understands this text he lived by this text we know now the importance of knowledge we have to have knowledge we're going to be asked about this knowledge we're going to be asked about this knowledge and we're going to be held accountable about the actions we're going to be asked about the knowledge when? in the grave we're going to be asked about the actions when? on Yom Al-Qiyamah so this is very very important very, very important. Who likes to have a test in the dunya and fail? He goes to take the test. He gets the paper back. Red marks everywhere. Flunked. You, flunked. you didn't study? You come to a test, for example, he's going to get a new job. Or a test to graduate from a doctor's degree. Or a master's degree. Or a high school diploma. Or whatever the case may be. A driving test. Does he like to have a failing grade? Is he satisfied to flunk? Somebody flunked a test. Huh? This doesn't even sound good. Uh, he flunked, uh, he's fl- he flunked. Uh, they called him in high school, uh, flunky. And he flunked, he repeated. Uh, but this is in the affairs of the dunya. This is about Allah, Azawajal. This is about, uh, this is about the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is about the deen of Al-Islam. This is about the deen of Al-Islam. This is about the reason why we were created. We're going to be asked about it. We're going to be asked about what we say, what we do. We're going to be asked about what we say, what we do. We're going to be asked in the grave. We're going to be held accountable for our actions. They're going to be weighed. There's people going to be, they're going to go to the paradise in the Jannah, happy, reunited with their families if they were believers. The people are going to go to the hellfire. People are going to go to the hellfire and be punished. A punishment that is not from this life. That's not from this life. So a believer has to take this uh, seriously. And this is the, the key for this. The key to success is here. That's the importance of learning. It's the indication here of the importance of this knowledge and the usul of thalatha. But this here is the key for success. Anybody who does not follow these steps here, he's a loser. He's a loser. He's a flunky. He flunked. This test, you don't want to flunk. Nobody wants to flunk any test. But this test, we don't want to flunk. Those people, they, those people, they, they fail the test. Ha ha la adri. Ha ha la adri. Ha ha la adri. Sami'tum nash yukuluna shay'in faqultuhu. The Prophet sallallahu informed us about that. The people who are not able to answer the question in the grave, that's what they say. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I heard the people saying something, so I said like they said. I heard the people saying something, so I said like they said. So this is very, very, very important. This is why we're created. Whoever is abiding by these, and he's fulfilling the rights of these steps, and he is staying within the limits of these steps here. This is the one who is successful. This one is Naji. This one is successful. Whoever does not have these steps, he got three of them. He didn't have one. Ah, he will not be successful. He'll be a loser. He'll be a loser. The author he says, What the real Ta'ala. What the real Kaudu Ta'ala. We had a Menjimiri Sani al Musannif. And who? Al Mahaj Salafi. Naam, and this is how he teaches. The first thing was, is the mas'ala. The second thing is, al-dalil. Al-mas'ala, al-dalil. Al-mas'ala, al-dalil. And this is the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Mas'ail wa dalail. Mas'ail wa dalail. This is the methodology of the ulama. Of the ulama. He didn't say, I said this or I said that. Or he didn't say it's obligatory upon you and not me. Rather, it's obligatory upon, upon us. Huh? And, and obligatory upon us. And the evidence is in the statement of Allah, not in my statement. Is in the statement of Allah. He says, "What dalil qawluhu ta'ala." And the evidence is the statement of Allah, the Most High. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal Asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. 
إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر So he says رحمه الله تعالى that the evidence for this what he mentioned here the evidence for these four uh, issues these four مسائل is in the statement of Allah the Most High in the name of Allah the Most Gracious the Most Merciful والعصر I swear by the time والعصر والعصري like this this is the while here is, is well القسم this means a swear, an oath. You know that because after it is ism majrur. Wal qasim in huruf al jar. Wal asri. So this means he's, Allah is by the time, and He's taking an oath by the time. Now by the time, in that insana lafi khusr. That verily all mankind is in loss. Is in loss. All mankind. There's no exception here in this first part. All mankind is in loss. The white one, the black one, the, the, the tall one, the short one, the old one, the young one. All man, in al insana, a kullu insan. Kullu insan is in loss. Is in loss. Illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Wa tawasaw bil haq. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. Except for those who believe and work righteous deeds and, uh, and join amongst each other the truth. And adjoin together, uh, patience. Uh, mutually adjoining uh, upon one another the truth. And mutually joining on one another, patience. These are the ones who are exempted from loss. These are the ones who are exempted from loss. All mankind is in loss except for these people. All mankind is in loss except for these people. Everybody with me? Who are they? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. Can somebody believe without knowledge? Can somebody believe? Believe in what? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ عَمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي That's the first one. وَكُتُبِهِ All of the, 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 the of, of, of al-Iman. Naam, they believe in Allah, they believe in the messenger, they believe in the religion of Islam. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ عَمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّ they believe in what Allah has made it obligatory to believe in. They are the ones that are successful. First they believe. All of this belief here is based upon? Upon knowledge. Upon knowledge. Based upon knowledge. The knowledge, he learns it's in his heart. He has belief. He knows it and believes it. He knows it and he believes it. He has the knowledge in his heart and it's firm and he believes it. And he has certainty about that. So now he's from the people who believe. That belief is based upon knowledge. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and they work righteous deeds. They work righteous deeds. Where's that? That's the second one. Would amilu bihi? But also, there's an indication for the first one. Huh? Can somebody work a righteous deed without knowledge? Then he has to have knowledge. Before to work a... The deed cannot be righteous if he doesn't know how to do it. How could it be a righteous deed? Many, many people, they try to do righteous deeds. That's how they became from? Al-Dalin. That's how they became from Al-Dalin. Because they, they, they want to do righteous deeds, but they don't know how. They want to do righteousness. That's how people innovate in the deen of Allah Muslims, they wind up in innovation. Some of them because they're innovators and they have desires and whims and misguidance in their heart. Others, they just follow their, the whims and they, don't, they worship Allah without knowledge upon ignorance. So they fall into innovation. So their deed is not righteous. Their deed is not righteous. So in order for the deed to be righteous, it has to have knowledge. Because that deed has to be in accordance to two principles. Al-Ikhlasu wal matabah and you kuna khalis on sawaba, as has preceded in other classes. And you kuna khalis on sawaba. Kayf you kuna khalis on sawaba biduni ilm. How can it be sincerely for Allah and according to the Sunnah without knowledge? It can't. So this is also an indication for knowledge. An indication for knowledge. To, to know Allah and to, to believe in Him and everything that He has commanded to believe in. Illa ladina amanu. They believe and they have knowledge what they believe in. Naam, and then wa amilu salihat. And they work righteous deeds. And they work righteous deeds. Also an indication for, for knowledge. Because the deed cannot be righteous without knowledge. They advise one another upon the truth. They advise one another about, about the truth. About the haqq that they believed in. And the haqq about the deeds that they are performing. And they, they advise one another like this with the truth. They advise one another. This one also is an indication to the obligation of huh? uh, calling. Uh, of calling. This is the third one. A da'wah to ilayhi. But all of this goes back to 
Huh? Knowledge. Knowledge. He can't call to the, he can't advise each other with the truth. He doesn't know what the truth is. It's not clear for him. So again, even this calling, proofs, evidence, uh, for, with knowledge, with knowledge. So even to call and to advise one another with the truth, this all requires knowledge. That's again going back to the importance of knowledge. So that's the third stage. That once they learn and once they apply it themselves, Amanu wa Aminu Salihat, Maktafu bi anfusihim. After that, they have a desire in their heart to help others. They see the khayr that they are upon and they see the evil and the danger that others are upon. If they die in that state, for example, how will it be for him? Somebody who died upon shirk, a'udhu billah. Somebody who died upon drinking alcohol, a'udhu billah. Somebody who died upon innovation, a'udhu billah. Somebody who prays five times a day in a manner that is innovated. So after learning this, maybe coming from that, or coming from worse than that, Allah favored him and, and taught him. And then he is able to have success to apply that. He takes the sweetness of iman, he's not going to just leave people like that. In falsehood and in darkness, whether you have a concern for them. What also? Bilhaq. And they advise one another. Advise one another with the truth. And this requires knowledge. And it requires knowledge. Some people want to advise others and they wind up harming them. Some people want to command the good and they wind up bringing more evil. Some people want to prohibit the evil and they wind up bringing a greater evil. So likewise, this requires knowledge. Knowledge is the first. Al-ilmu qa'idu al-amal. Al-ilmu qa'idu al-amal. Al-qa'id is the leader, the one in front, the imam. Al-ilm, imam al-amal. The, the ilm, knowledge, it is the leader of action. It's the leader of action. Action follows behind knowledge. Huh? But the knowledge is obtained for the sake of action. And for the, 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 that's, the, that's the means to have the action. So the action is what is intended. It, what is the goal and the order to achieve it is the, the knowledge. They come hand in hand and they work like this. They come hand in hand and they work like this. And then after that, one calls to that. Upon that knowledge, he'll bring khayr. He will have good. He will have good. He was asked, uh, Abdullah bin Mubarak, if they told him, you only have, if they told, if, they, if, if, if it was said to him, tomorrow is the hour for you. Tomorrow, if it was, it was said to you, you die t- tomorrow, the angel of death come for you. What would you do? Man into Sanim. Abdullah bin Mubarak, Ibn al Mubarak, Rahimullah. What, what, what would you do? This question was posed to him. If somebody told you tomorrow you, you, you will die, what will you do? Uh, we think, what will we do? Huh? What did he say? Ajris u'allimun nas. Ajris u'allimun nas. I will sit down and teach the people. I will sit down and teach the people. Because of the great reward that will come from that. Just a few minutes left, a few hours left, a few days left, sit down and teach the people. Because that knowledge will go and go and go and the benefit from that will continue. And they continue. Whoever would like to have their deeds continue after death and let him teach somebody something good from the deen of Allah. Azawajal. Let him teach them in tawheed. Let him teach them in fatiha. Let him teach him Tawheed al-Rububiyya wa al-Uluhiyya wa sama'i wa sifat. Let him teach him how to pray properly according to the Sunnah. Let him teach something good like this. This is indication I heard uh, Shaykh Anas Shaykh Suleiman al-Rahayli mention many times. Don't let anybody proceed you to teaching your child the Fatiha. And you'll be the first one to teach him the Fatiha. Because after that he's going to recite. How many salat, how many times will we recite? If you're sincere in that, your own child get the reward from you. You'll be the first one to get that, to reap the benefit from that. And to teach the child the Fatiha. How can you teach something if you don't know it? Again, the importance of knowledge. Again, the importance of knowledge. So, he, Allah he mentioned it's clear. We see the point of evidence for the author. The author, he mentioned these, these four points here are in Surah Al-Asr. Who can, who can point them out for us? Hmm. Uh-huh. Except those who believe. Uh-huh. Okay, well, what's that mean though? We have to relate these to the text. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, there we go. You had the second one. Abu Muhammad. That's the second one. Oh, the third one. وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ And they advise one that this is a da'wah to إِلَيْهِ نعم وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ 
and they advise one another to be patient. To be patient. This is very, very beneficial. This is very, very beneficial. Because as we see patience again three times, be patient upon the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. No matter how strong somebody is, he, he falls weak. Somebody, an individual, he, he, he strives and strives and strives, but he can't do it by himself. Whenever his brother advise him and remind him, this, puts the, this re, re, revives the iman in his faith. Sometimes a believer will hear something that he already knows. Somebody who has arrogance, whenever they hear something they already know, what do they say? I know that. I know that. La, a believer who somebody tells them something they already know from the deen. Zakhallah khayra. Because a dhikr, a dhikr yanfa. A believer. A believer, he benefits from the reminder. He benefits from the reminder. So sometimes somebody will hear something, he already knows it, but it'll be the best thing that he hears in that day. He'll be reminded of the virtue of salat and jama'ah. Everybody knows that, alhamdulillah. But to remind that and to remember that 25 times, 27 times, this revives that in your heart. Okay, I gotta, in the morning I got I to gotta work on myself. I got to do this. So it requires patience and cooperating upon patience, advising one another, advising one another, sometimes seeking knowledge. You have to advise him, brother, I don't, how come you don't come to the class? You advise him like this, patience to work together. Whenever the believers are advising one another like this, then the khayr grows. The khayr grows. They, 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 they help one another. They advise one another. They cooperate together like this and reminding one another. Then this is a very, very beneficial. Because a believer, no matter how hard he tries, and shaitan, he will get to him. But whenever he... he he'll be... Al-Maru bi ikhwani. That's what the, 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 they mentioned. That based on your brothers, that's who you are. You, you, this is a chain. It's a link. So whenever your brothers are strong and they help you, then you'll be strong. You'll be strong. Your brothers, they, they help you. The sisters, they help one another. So that's why it's good to have good companions because they cooperate together upon piety and righteousness and they help you. And you grow in your deed and you become stronger. What the law sown. Yet the law sown of bilhaqi was sabr. They advise one another, reminding one another uh, to be patient and to be steadfast and to, and to remember Allah Azza wa Jalla to be obedient, to leave off sins. Ya akhiya taqillah. Ya akhiya taqillah. This is a great, great advice. Whether this is the advice of Allah Azza wa Jalla, we'll see it Allah. The wasi of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ittaqullah. Ittaqullah. If somebody t- today says to your brother, you say to him, Ittaqillah. What? You'll get mad at you sometimes. Some people, yani, some people. And yani, subhanAllah, if somebody tells you, Ittaqillah, nah, ma'ahsan, sahih. I need to fear Allah. I need to fear Allah. Jazakallah khaira for reminding me. I need to fear Allah. Great advice. And yani, yeah, they, they advise each other upon patience and they advise each other upon, with, with the truth. This is the way of the believers. All mankind is in loss. All mankind is in loss. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned here, this is a, with uh, emphasis. Inna al insana lafi khusr. Inna is, uh, it brings emphasis. Harfu tawkidin. Lafi, la, the lamb is, uh, is a lam al tawkid. Al mazahlaqa. This is very surely, no doubt, he's in loss. Man, all mankind is in loss. Allah Azza wa Jal, He didn't say, Inna al insana la khasir. Shaykh Uthaymin, He mentioned this uh, fa'idah. Rahimahullah. He didn't say subhanahu wa ta'ala that very insane mankind is a loser. They're losers. He said, Lafi khusr. Fi, it has the meaning of a dharfiyah, meaning mungamisun, from every, min, min kulli jiha. He is engulfed in loss. Not, he's not losing, he's not a loser, rather he's in loss. All mankind is in loss, indicating like he's in it, and law, he's surrounded by loss. And this is the case. Lafi khusr. And the people who do not have these traits, they are in loss. They are, they are surrounded in loss. If they die without these traits, then the angels, they don't come to them in a nice manner. Uh, they strip their souls out. They, they come like this, beating their backs and their faces, and they say to them, taste the blazing fire. Taste the punishment of the fire. And if the soul comes out like this, it's taken out. It's taken out. Because why? Because they're losers. Because they're losers. They're losers. The losers are the ones who lost their own souls and their families. They're, they're losers. So this is something very serious. That nobody wants to be a loser. But all mankind is a loser. Except for these people. Those who gather these traits. So we see again how important is knowledge and how important it is to apply that knowledge. How important it is to help your brothers upon that knowledge and to be patient upon that all the way till death. Because the one who gets it, applies it, and he advises with it, and then he dies upon another path. Ayyadim billah. What would happen? He's lost. He's a loser. 
all his life he's, he's upon this and then at the time of death he is on another path he is on another way he's a loser he's a loser so then as-sabr ala al-adha fi ila al-mamat ila al-mamat that a person he has to be patient upon that way all the way until he dies upon this path upon getting knowledge upon applying knowledge upon helping and calling others to knowledge being patient upon that all the way until he meets his lord all the way until he meets his lord this one he is not a loser this one is this one is the winner this one is the winner this is the one that he has the greatest honor the honor of meeting allah azza wa his creator and the one who shaped him and gave him form and, and provided him for his whole life and everything that he has all the way until his death and has sent his angels to take his soul in peace and respect and honor this is the best this person he's a winner he's not a loser the people who don't have this then they are losers they are losers in this noble chapter chapter al-asr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he began by swearing by the time what asr what asr allah azza wa jalla in his book he swears by uh, his creation uh, many different times he swears by uh, many different things and many different things from them he swears by uh, by the creation or different types of the creation subhanahu wa ta'ala the ulama they mentioned uh, the the benefit and the wisdom behind that is to indicate the greatness of that thing that allah he swears by he swears by his creation uh, or by certain whatever he swears by subhanahu wa ta'ala to indicate the greatness of that thing to indicate the greatness of that thing sometimes allah he will swear by himself فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ In Surah An-Nisa. But also Allah, He swears uh, also by His creation. And that's uh, in order to indicate the greatness of that thing. Because if a, a person, he sees the greatness, also the importance. Also the importance of that affair that is being sworn by. So whenever a person sees the greatness uh, of something in the creation and realizes how great it is and how amazing it is, then this is an indication of how much greater the one who created it is. And so then one he ponders over the greatness of the creation to understand the reality of the greatness uh, of the creator, of the greatness of the creator. And one sees the beauty of the creation and then he knows the beauty of the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah is swearing by the time. The ulama they say that's to indicate the importance of something if Allah swears by it. And also the greatness of that thing. Wal asr. Allah also he swears by the night and other parts of the day. Many, many times Allah he swears by time. Or parts of time. Well, duha. Well, layli. Well, nahari. Allah, He swears by the night, by the day, by the morning time. The morning, the morning time and the daytime, by the night time. Allah is swearing by, uh, here, well, asr, by all of time. This is the indication the, of the importance of time. This is the indication of the importance of time. A believer, He takes advantage of time. Because as, uh, as it's mentioned after that, swearing by time, all mankind is in loss in that time. The issue uh, of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for each one of us, He has, we all have a beginning and an end in this life. This life has a beginning and an end likewise, and then the next, and then the next life, al yawm al-akhir, al-akhirah. But each soul has a beginning in this life, a beginning and an end. So we could look at it from the, uh, from the perspective of the, of the timeline. Somebody has the day that he was born, and he has the day that he would die. And nobody knows the, birth, the birthday came, he was born, so he knows what day that was. But as for the day that they would die, he doesn't know. But after that, that, that period there, that's called Darul Amal. This is the time for action. This is the time for action. And after that, there's Darul Hisab al Jaza. After that, after that, there's going to be accountability and reckoning. So this time, and somebody, if he was born on this day, who knows how, let's we'll say it's 80 years, 100 years, even if it's 200 years. However long, the time like, like Nuh alayhi 950 years, it comes to an end. Every day what's happening? He's losing time. He's losing time. It's getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Every single day, every single breath, he's getting closer to that day. To that day the angel comes to him and takes his soul. And after that they take him and wash him if he's a believer and put him in the ground. And they put him in the ground. They put him in the ground. They cover him. There, that's everybody's getting closer. We're losing time. Everybody's losing time. They're losing time. And the warner came. One of the meanings of a warner, subhanAllah, a benefit I heard from Shaykh Abdul Razak recently. Hafidhullah. The warners, the prophets were warners, and the messengers were warners. There's another warner, a Nadir. One of the one of the tafsir of Nadir, they mentioned a Nadir. Shayba. Allah Akbar. Shayba. 
Sheba. Gray hair. Somebody starts seeing gray hair, that's a warning. That's a warning. That's a, that's a warning. La ilaha illallah. Some people, they die out young. Some people, they, if, if they don't die young, what happens? They die old. Because that day is coming, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. So if it didn't happen whenever he had full dark hair, it's going to happen when he has gray hair. So that's coming. And if for the people who didn't come yet, we don't know, maybe he's going to die young, maybe he's going to not die young, he doesn't know. But if he got old, he knows he's not dying young. So what's he doing? He's dying old. So the, the, the gray hair, when it starts coming on the side and the beard here and there, that's a sign, that's a warner. Wake up, ya akhi. Wake up, ya akhi. You, you, oh, oh, You're going to be asked, what are you talking about? What are you saying? What are you doing? Where's the money coming from? Now it's time. Rectify all that. You can rectify all that with Tawbah right now. All that whole life, 100 years, 50 years, 60 years, misguidance or sin, transgression, astaghfirullah. And leave it. And leave it. He can be, he can be good. He can be good. That he, maybe he only lives moments after that. He's, a, he's from the people of paradise. Because he made Toba before he died. The, 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 the gray hair is a warner. It's a warning. Somebody becoming old, oh, this is a warning. This is from the warning that a person he takes. We have to take heed. Because that day is coming. So everybody is losing the time. But those who believe, they're actually gaining. Because that time that they have, they benefit from it. Their iman causes them to work righteous deeds. So every moment that they have, they're worshiping, they're worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla. They're remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla. They're performing the prayer. They're giving charity. They're learning. They're studying. They're memorizing. They're teaching. Whatever. Upon this, they're not losers. That time that they were given, they took advantage of it in the remembrance of Allah. They took advantage of it in the, in the obedience of Allah. They were striving against their souls to be obedient. And they left off sins, hoping for the reward. Fearing the punishment. So they're not losers. Rather, they're winners. They're winners. This is the case. Wal Asr, Allah, He swears by the time. Wal Asr. Everybody's losing. Everybody's losing. All mankind. We're losing time, no doubt. Everybody shares in that. But a believer, he's gaining. In that time that he has, he benefits. He's benefiting. He's taking advantage. That's why one of the snares, the traps, was shibak is shaitan. We, we learned before shaitan, he has a shabaka. Ba lahu shibak. He has more than one. He has more than one shirk is a shabaka. And along with that is kufr and nifaq. And then after that, he has a shabaka of, kaba- uh, of bid'ah. Then he has a shabaka of kaba'ir. And he has a shabaka of sada'ir. And then he has a shabaka of tasrifat. Sofa, 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 sofa. Bi'ar waqt wal ghafla. And if he can't make you do all of these things, he at least will make you not benefit from your time. Do something that's not haram, not halal. I mean, not, not, not an act of worship. It's not a sin. It's just wasting time. Because the time is going. The time is going. So the time is very, very important. A believer, he will never say, let's waste some time. He will never say, let's waste some time. La abidan, abidan. A believer, he does not waste time. He does not waste time. He's trying to benefit from his time. Time is precious. If you don't cut the time, the time will cut you. It's like a sword. Some of the ulama they mentioned. We have to take advantage of the time. And the best way, a person who will look at how he could arrange his time and benefit it for, for, in the best manner so that he is... Uh, he is doing that which is most beneficial in his life because time is running out. Time is running out. Wal asr, time is important. Allah swear by the time. Duha, wal duha, it's time. And this is amazing. Duha, how does it become duha? Huh? Everything, the stars and the sun and the moon and the earth, they're, they're in an orbit and they're flowing. And whenever they come in a special, Allah puts them in a position, there's light and then there's darkness and then the moon is here, the sun is there. This is powerful and strong. The one who created all of these things and he causes them to flow in this manner. And from that flow, bringing light, bringing heat, bringing winter and seasons, bringing uh, fall from, from, the, from the orbits of these, of, the, of these creation that he created, subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever the, they come in a specific place, it's hasr. He moves them. Maghrib comes. He moves them. Isha comes. They move. They move. وَكُلُّمْ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ all of them are there in an orbit flowing. Allah Azza wa Jalla, this is powerful for the Asr to come. This is powerful, this is, this is amazing. And this time is the time of action. And every day is a new day. And every night is a new night. Every day is a new day. And the deeds of today are different than from the deeds of yesterday. Inside time, the actions of mankind are being recorded. Inside time, wal asr. Inside of that time, the actions of mankind have been recorded. People have already passed and their deeds have been recorded. This one he was a winner and that one he's a loser. Now it's our time. Now it's our time to take advantage of our time. 
and the worship of Allah and His remembrance and His dhikr subhanahu wa ta'ala and His obedience. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم.